All right. Here's some of the requirements for great Wi-Fi. And again, this is enterprise grade. You don't quite need to go to this level for home Wi-Fi, but it uh, doesn't hurt. So here's, here's some of our challenges. We'll start on the left and work our way to the right. So over here, requirements for great Wi-Fi. Let's begin with having um, a little knowledge of Wi-Fi. There are several different ways that you can come to terms with, with the mysterious um, inner workings of Wi-Fi. And the one that I recommend is that you uh, just read the 802.11 standard. So the 802.11 standard, uh, when it was first released in 1997, was about 400, 500 pages. This is not the current version. It's the previous version. This is the one that was, uh, oh, this is 2007's version, and we have a 2016 version right now. So uh, the point I want to make is there is a lot to it, and most people don't realize how much there is to it. This is not just fluff. This is all engineering detail that someone who would like to uh, dedicate themselves to understanding how Wi-Fi works should be familiar with all of this. And there's quite a bit more. This is only about two-thirds of what there is today. Today, the standard is about 3,500 pages. So you can download that for free and study it cover to cover. And that's the, the cheapest, but not maybe the easiest way to learn. There's another way. There's a vendor neutral program called the CWNP program. It's the Certified Wireless Network Program. And um, I'm not affiliated with it, but I can tell you from experience it's very well done. The entire program, vendor neutral, is based on the 802.11 standard. Now, it's good to have vendor uh, specific certifications as well. But the thing about it is, is all of the vendors, no matter what they tell you, they have to follow the 802.11 standard. So if you understand the standard itself, you understand uh, any, any vendor's equipment. So you may work with one particular vendor most of the time, but sometimes you have to come across another uh, type of hardware or something like that. If your background is from the vendor neutral approach, you'll have an easier uh, way of adapting to other different types of uh, hardware and equipment. So I highly recommend either learn the standard, become a student of the standard itself, or take the shortcut, which is the CWNP program, and go through that materials. Either way, you'll become very well uh, versed in the, the intricacies of 802.11 Wi-Fi. Once you've got that knowledge, you can begin to create an educated design. I remember back in the old days, I've been doing networking for a while. I remember in the old days uh, of wired networks when Ethernet was king, we would call in um, for a cable installer to come out and install cable drops to put Ethernet at each one of the desktops. Can you imagine back in those days if we just called the contractor and said, we'd like you to come out and put in 50 new cable drops. We have a bunch of new employees. And you know what, just put them wherever it's easiest for you and we'll move everybody's desks over to wherever you put the cable drops to make it easy on you. Who would do that? Nobody would have done that. But that's the way most Wi-Fi is designed today. Most organizations put the access points, the all powerful and all critical access points in positions where it's easiest for them to get a cable drop to, a cable run to, and with no thought of what coverage effect that's going to have. And so with understanding Wi-Fi and how it works and what the all the different types of interferences that can be caused by Wi-Fi, especially with the new multiple input, multiple output antenna systems, now that we have that knowledge, we should begin to apply that knowledge to an educated design of placing these access points where they can do their job the best, not just where it's convenient to put them. Many times you'll hear manufacturers today say, don't worry about placing the access points, just buy lots of them, put them everywhere, and then our very super intelligent software will be able to configure and control your Wi-Fi RF environment. And we find that's just not true today. In most cases, it's not true. If you do some educated design and give these access points and the controllers behind them the best opportunity to succeed, you'll have much, much better results and you'll be much happier with your system. And most importantly, 
and really the only metric that matters is that your end users will, will appreciate the Wi-Fi network and be able to use it without thinking about whether or not it's working properly. Okay? So with an educated design, now we have to deploy the network. Deployment of the wireless network seems simple. You just put some access points up in the ceiling, but there's a lot to it. There's even cables. It's amazing how many wires are involved in a wireless network. And putting those wires in the right places and getting them done correctly is key to uh, the installation. Placing the access points so they're not impeded by ducting, by walls, by uh, different types of construction materials, that's all part of the deployment process. It takes a little understanding and it takes a little experience too. So with deployment comes really the basis of your Wi-Fi network. Once the Wi-Fi network is in place, and this is a mistake that we see frequently, many organizations leave the controllers in their default settings. And by doing that, well, let me rephrase that. By the, a default setting on a Wi-Fi network is almost never going to be proper for your environment. They almost always have to have some type of customized configuration to be able to be used properly in your environment. So we need to keep that in mind. Okay, finally, once this network is installed, once it's been configured properly, now we have to validate that the installation matches the educated design because there's a lot that can go wrong in between those, those steps. Once this is all done, your platform now has a great chance to succeed. But does it? And does it really? So that's what we're going to find out.